interested in learning about light conversions, you are in the right place. Join me in this new video from Hort Americas TV in order to learn how to use light data from your sensors and how to convert to the correct units in order to know how plants are using light. So let's understand light. First, we'll start separating light from solar radiation. Wait. Solar radiation is not light? Well, yes it is, but includes more than light. Solar radiation covers a range from 300 to 1,500 nanometers. It can be even a little bit more, but atmosphere blocks apart. Not all solar radiation is light. Solar radiation is measured in terms of energy. We commonly use units like uh, joules, joules per square meter per second or watts per square meter. These measurements include not only light, but also heat and UV radiation. Just 45 to 50% of solar radiation represents light. So let's make a summary. Solar radiation includes more than light. 40% to 50% of solar radiation is light. The rest is UV light and heat. To measure solar radiation, we use energy units. This can be joules per square meter per second or watts per square meter. Light includes all the wavelengths that are visible to human eye being this about half of the total solar radiation, which can also be called global radiation. When trying to understand how plants use light, we need to use a specific unit that can tell us the amount of light plants use to work. This portion of light goes from 400 to 700 nanometers, and we call this PAR photosynthetic active radiation. To measure PAR, we use PPFD, photosynthetic photon flux, and the units is micromoles per square meter per second. This unit speaks about photons of light. But how can we measure PAR? There are specific sensors that can measure PAR. We call these quantum sensors. In Hort Americas, we can offer multiple options of light sensors from Apogee. When trying to know PPFD inside of the greenhouse, we have some problems. PAR sensors are not as common as radiation sensors, which are usually included in meteorological weather station in greenhouses. So let's learn what to do in a typical situation in greenhouse production. Most of the time, we have the following scenario. Meteorological stations are generally outside of the greenhouse. So most of the time, radiation data will be from outside the greenhouse, not inside. And also, most of the time, the units used to measure radiation are energy units. So then we have two problems in here. First, we need to know light inside the greenhouse, not outside. Secondly, we want to know PPFD, not watts per square meter or joules. We need PPFD to know if our plant is getting enough light. This can help you to take smart decisions like considering uh, supplemental lighting, or if you uh, have more of the light that is required, then you can uh, also consider the use of shade clothes. We need them to get to work and calculate PAR inside our greenhouse. First, let's calculate light inside the greenhouse. Remember, most sensors will provide solar radiation in watts per square meter or joules. We already learned light is about half of solar radiation. If we assume this, we can calculate 50% from the total solar radiation to get the amount of light that we have in this place. But this is from outside, right? Not inside. We need to get then the value of light inside of our greenhouse. Greenhouse structure 
and covering can reduce the light transmitted from the outside to inside the greenhouse. We can assume this is about 70%. It could be more, it could be less depending on the greenhouse, but let's assume is 70%. You will have then to calculate now the 70% of the calculated light outside the greenhouse to know how much light is inside the greenhouse. We finally have light inside the greenhouse, but is in watts per square meter or joules. We haven't finished yet. So let's make the conversion from energy units now to PPM. In order to make this conversion, we will have to know which is our source of light. When working in a greenhouse, we obviously will choose sunlight, right? The conversion factor then will be 4.6. One joule is equal to 4.6 micromoles. In order to know PPFD, you will have to multiply energy units in joules or watts per square meter by 4.6. Just in case, joules are equal to watts per square meter. This information can be very useful for greenhouse production. But what about artificial light? This is also very useful for artificial light because sometimes we measure light using energy sensor or even luxometer. This is why I have included here the conversion factor to get PPFD units from energy units for other light sources like high pressure sodium lamps and LED lighting. For LED lighting can be way more complicated because the conversion factor will depend on the light source, but also on the LED color. Here, you can get the conversion factor for a situation using just red light, just blue light, or 90% red and 10% blue. Just like the previous example, you will have to multiply energy units by the conversion factor in order to get micromoles per square meter per second. What about luxus? I know when working with artificial light, a lot of people get luxometers. Here is a table showing also conversion factor to get PPFD units from luxus. Very useful information, don't you think? Now that you have PPFD units, let's understand how plants are using light. When measuring light, we can speak about light intensity or sum of light. Light intensity is the amount of light per second. Sum of light is intensity for a period of time. To understand light in plants, we usually want to know how much light the plant is getting per day. We call this DLI or daily light integral. In order to calculate DLI, we need to know the following information. Light intensity in PPF, hours of light, or also called photo period. And here is the complete formula. This is all you need to get the DLI that your plant is getting. When you know DLI, you have a lot of power on your head to make good decisions in system management. Why? Well, there is already plenty information out there about the minimum and optimal levels of DLI required for many crops. Here is a table showing common greenhouses crops. As mentioned, if DLI is lower than required, you can evaluate the use of artificial light. And when the light is above from the optimum level and you have a situation of heat accumulation in your greenhouse, you can easily calculate the best percentage of light transmission for a shade cloth to maintain the optimum DLI and reduce heat from radiation. In the case of artificial lighting, all this information is crucial in order to know things like the number of lamps required, the photo period required to provide the best lighting conditions. So it's really important to manage this information if you're working with artificial light. Whoa, that was a lot of information, right? Sometimes it's hard to get the correct information about light management. And in Horta Americas, we know this from our customer questions. And 
we want to get sure now you have a place where to find all the information that you need in order to improve the management inside your systems. I hope you like this video and see you on the next one. My name is Carla Garcia, Hort America's Technical Service. Please contact us if you have any questions or interest in our products. See you on the next one.